Hey, what's up? This is Sergey with another quick tutorial. This time, I promise you, it's going to be very quick. I'm going to show you how to create from scratch this uh, procedural lava shape plus a shader. Both of those are quite simple and pretty straightforward. You won't spend more than 15 minutes on those, so that's uh, that's a bonus. Uh, and it's pretty, you know, good looking from a get go. So there is no complex uh, shader setup, no complex geometry. Uh, you can assemble it very quickly, put somewhere and just show to your supervisor late or just as an indicator of future detailed lava surface later on. Or you can actually mix that uh, in the background uh, of your lava sim so that you don't need to worry about how it will look. Do I need to sim this whole terrain? No, you don't. So this is the, this is the answer. Uh, this time we're going to be using uh, RenderMan because I, I'd like to switch from time to time to another render engines and just show you that you can use whatever in Houdini and it will always work. But the principles are the same as usual and uh, you can pretty much assemble it in any render engine that uh, you might be you know, interested in. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you the overview of the setup for those of you who don't want to waste your time and it's actually like this. <laughs> So geometry wise is pretty pretty easy to to assemble. Uh, so let's do that. I'm just gonna disable that for now. It's gonna be our reference geometry later on. I'm gonna create our new. Uh, let's actually minimize that for now. Uh, I also have like Pixar dome light uh, and distant light. No particular settings there. So yeah, call it lava two. We're gonna start with the height field as most terrains do. Okay, then we're gonna drop uh, high field noise. No fancy setup here, I'm just gonna eyeball the numbers here. Uh, something like that probably, oops. Okay, so that's very mild one. And then the trick is, is actually go down to the distortion tab and enable gradient wrap. Or gradient warp, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna enable both of those and go somewhere, somewhere here. As you can see, the shape already is quite close to what you probably can observe after the lava solidifies and like starts to bulge up and starts to crack in, in spots. So this is gonna be our base, maybe even 45 for now. Then I'm gonna go and use distort by noise. Not gonna be doing too much with it, just maybe, I don't know, 25. And just increase the size slightly so that it just wobbles a bit. Then I'm just gonna copy this, I'll drag, and I'm just gonna decrease the size of the noise maybe, and obviously the intensity as well. Something like that, maybe even 20. Okay. Then we're gonna use high fill layer to layer those two together. Just make sure you on height. Uh, you can play around with blending modes. You can even blend with in between those and see what works better for you. I recommend using maximum here because we need to fill those empty spots with a smaller size scale. You can repeat it several times and just go uh, to the point when you feel happy with how it looks. Uh, maybe we just decrease the sample size for the for the high field just a, just a touch so that we can see more details here. Yeah, well, it's actually fairly, fairly detailed. Uh, that's pretty much it actually. So on the height field size, we're pretty much done. Let's just convert to polygons. You can bake it later on if you don't want to have it as heavy as it is. Actually, let, let me see how heavy it is at the moment. It's 3 mil, uh, quite a lot, but then again, it's a quick one, so you can optimize it later. I'm gonna drop matnet right over here. I'm um, just gonna create Pixar Material Builder. Just gonna call it, oops, Pixar Lava Material. Cool. Dive inside, then we're gonna just use surface, pixel surface is fine. We don't need 
to have a complex setup. Okay, let's actually start rendering stuff out so that we could see what's going on. I'm gonna go on the layer up, I'm gonna go here. Let's link that material very quickly. As always, try to use relative links if you have matnet in the same uh, context here, so that later on, if you move it elsewhere, it still retains the, the real link. Uh, well, as usually, I try to remind every time you guys that relative links is better than absolute ones. Okay, so we have something here already. Uh, let's try just kick off the IPR. Obviously, the pattern will be different from what we had before, but uh, that should be enough. Okay, let's start with basic stuff. I'm gonna dive inside here. Uh, color is pretty much fine. Uh, let's see if we could go with increased roughness. Gonna switch to physical, maybe go to something like this. This one to physical. By the way, this one is basically limits you to physically accurate uh, reflection or not. So if you want, if you wish not to mess up your uh, surface, you go with physical and there is no way you can mess it up. <laughs> Artistic is you know, pushing some color variation onwards. So I'm just gonna edit touch just a bit. Well, maybe that's too much actually. And we'll just increase roughness here as well. Something like that. Already it looks pretty nice. I mean, you could mask out the zones when you want to have it smooth or not. I'm just gonna add very quickly some sort of bump here. Uh, let's just create Pixar bump. We're gonna go and plug it into globals here. Then I use fractal noise. You could use, if you use Karma, like a turbulent noise, unified, into aliasing, like in anything that you want. So frequency, yeah, we have something in there. So let's just duplicate it a bunch of times. And here we go with maybe 0.6. Increase this thing here. Uh, increase variation. Here we can go with maybe 0.2. The same thing. Just gonna randomly change stuff up just because we shortened time, because I promised you we're gonna be done in less than 15 minutes. So I'm gonna plug it here, plug it here, probably switch it to lighten, or you can use with overlay or multiply, it doesn't matter actually. So let's just, I'll drag to copy, bam, bam, and we're gonna plug it into bump, just to see if we change something else here. But as you can see, we have some sort of differential texturing going on in here. So this is the basic surface. You can push it forwards if you need. Uh, but then we're gonna just use the trick that I actually showed you guys in summer to winter uh, speed tree tutorial. Uh, I mean, if you're using Karma, we're gonna be playing around with dot product, but here we can actually use uh, dirt. And let me just plug it into the glow very quickly. Uh, so we're gonna use like some orange towards maybe red spectrum. Okay, then let's just increase the glow gain to like five maybe. Ooh, that's actually too much. Let's go with four. And let's play around with settings. So increase max distance maybe, fall off as well. Because now it's too too bright. Now we can just grab those guys. I'm gonna I'll drag it here. I'm gonna create additional blend over here and try to multiply it with what we have here. Okay, still too much. Let's go. Maybe decrease the max distance, actually. So basically, the thing this 
what we have to do is play around with the settings here to reach out and find the pattern that we're happy with. Obviously here is like we have those uh, small streaks, which is nice, but we're missing the larger uh, areas, so to speak. So here we have overlay, overlay. Let's just quickly check the the pattern here. So this is why. Uh, let's try to maybe further decrease the frequency to get larger spots. That should help us with that. Okay, now we're gonna cut it off. Maybe increase distance to two. As you can see, we like getting different variation just by playing around with the size of the chunks and the uh, Pixar dirt. But then again, this is basically occlusion, right? So you can either go with uh, dot product or curvature to drive those uh, glow masks or emission masks in case you're going to be using Mantra or Karma. And it's pretty nice. I mean, not only that, let me quickly pause this, but you can actually very quickly bring it up into Solaris to speed things up. Let me just switch it because I already assembled this scene here. Uh, the same thing, we just use SOP import to bring up our lava shader, then in material library, actually I played a lot with all of those. Uh, I assembled this thing here, as you can see pretty much the same setup here. And then if we go here and enable Pixar Renderman, hopefully it's going to be launching <laughs> quite quickly and I didn't miss out on anything here because uh, sometimes when I have it running as well, it's going to bug out. Unfortunately, let me actually just switch it. I'm going to be oops. Okay. Yeah, so we have some whole bunch of errors here. Uh, I'm just gonna try to restart the render on the off chance that it will be actually running. Uh, usually you would probably need to pick either or because sometimes as you can see if you just use the one in the object context and then you jump in the Solaris it doesn't really like that. But anyway I can tell you for a fact that it will work. So just trust me on this one. <laughs> I would like you to show it on Solaris as well, but I'm not really sure why this one doesn't work here. Um, let me really quickly check that the dome light is correct. This light is correct. Okay, there's some. Yeah, it seems like he's complaining about the lights. Not really sure why. Uh, here, material is correct. Actually, let me just try one more time. If this thing will launch. Yeah, it doesn't for some reason. Okay, well, too bad. Uh, maybe later on I'll give you the reason why that doesn't work in the description. But anyway, here you can see we can quickly do something fancy about it and uh, play around with the settings and uh, show to you supervisor lit. And hey, we're under 15 minutes, just like I promised. Oh yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's it for now for this very quick tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, feel free to message something in the comment section below and I'll definitely take a look and try to debug will help you out if you have any problems. Thank you for your time. So just out. Bye bye.